the next question. A good performance is based on consistent dash A addition, B grooming, C reciter, and D rehearsal. So the answer there is uh, uh, you recite, reciter. So when you recite very well, you know everything, drama, you have to recite over and over again before you can perform very well. So by the time you rehearse very well, they, it will become part of you. Whatever you recite, you say it. So this is very important in drama. You perform very well. You want to perform very well, you have to write, you have to recite, you have to over and over again, you cram and recite them one after the other. So let's go to the next question. The second part of the action in a prose is called a climax, exposition, falling action, rising action. So the second part of the action in a prose. So you have the first part is exposition. So the next part is what we call a, a climax. That's what get to that peak, climax. So let's go on to the next question. A box where sweet compacted lie is an example of apostrophe, a conceit, hyperbole, simile, a box where sweets compacted lie, compacted sweet lie is an example of apostrophe, conceit, hyperbole, simile. That is an example of exaggeration. We call it exaggeration. You are over emphasizing, and that's an hyperbole. Option C there, hyperbole. Can we move to the next question? Melodrama is to tragedy as far as is to A acts, B love, C comedy, and D senses. So when you look at fast, it's an example of a funny play. You laugh. You crack joke. In fact, sometimes you watch some play and uh, 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 you begin to shed tears as a result of very funny, you know, part of such a poem. I mean, such a, a work of art. So it is a comedy. So the answer is C, because it makes you laugh. So let's have the next question. Limerick. Limerick is a dash poem with a strict rhyme. You know, we have come across this one most of it in jam, most of it in white, and most of it in echo. Even in the course of these um, uh, 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 questions we are reviewing here. So, Limery is a dash poem with a strict uh, uh, rhyme scheme. A, five line, B, 14 line, C, five stanza, and D, 12 stanza. The answer is five line. It's just one stanza or five line. We have said it over and over again. You know, very funny and rhyme it together. So the next question, we are going to read this on same poem. We are going to read the line, some lines here. As yet, but not, breathe, shine, and seek to men, that I may rise, and stand, overthrow me, and bend. The lines above are uh, dactylis, iambic, spodaic, and trochae. So the answer there is iambic because of the word. Look at the rhyme there. Breathe, shine, seek, rise. So it talks about iambic patameter. So let's go to the next question. A story which starts in the middle of the action is a dramatic irony, b for shadow, C, in media race, and D, flashback. The answer is C, in media race. So, a story that starts in the middle of the action. So, you don't have the understanding. It didn't start from the beginning. It just started at the, at the middle, you know, of the action. So, we call it in media race. Let's look at this question. Friendship is a shattering tree. French is a shattering tree. Illustrate A, metaphor, B, oxymoron, C, personification, 
dissimilar. You know, this one is what we call direct comparison. You are trying to compare friendship with a shattering tree. So this one is a metaphor. The meaning is underlying. The meaning is hidden. So that's the direct uh, uh, comparison. So metaphor is answer. A poem of praise is A, ballad, B, dirge, C, panegyric, D, limerick. The answer is panegyric. Panegyric. We have said it again today. Let's look at this question. The use of foreshadow in the literary work. The use of foreshadow in literary work. A. Adds natural element found only at night. B. Highlights element not found in real life. C. Hints of what might happen later. And D. Relates events that occurred in the past. So the answer is C. Hint what might happen later. It predicts, talks about the future, talks about what will happen in the future. The next one is a typical Italian sonnet, N in A. So we have said that uh, a, a sonnet is a 14 line poem. We have eight and we have uh, six. So eight and six, making 14. A, couplet, B, tasset. C, quatrain, and D, sestet. Sestet, when you look at couplet, two line. Tasset, three line. Uh, uh, quatrain, four line. And D, we are talking of Italian poem. If it's Shakespearean now, we talk about uh, another thing. But here, sestet, that is eight and six. Sestet is six, so the answer is D, sestet. Let's look at this poem to answer uh, question 94. The goggling and ravated our test. But we needed to find the source first. Then we could drink till we burst. The mood. Can you see that? The goggling and ravated our test. But we needed to find the source first. Then we could drink till we burst. The mood is one of anger, despotency, expectation, regret. So here. It's a kind of expectation to aggravate our task. We, but we needed something. But then, so that we can drink. So it's an expectation. See the answer. Let's look at the next question. The next one. Okay. The goggling aggravated our task. But we needed to find the source first. Then we could drink to a boss. The dominant literary device. In the extract is metaphor, oxymoron, okay, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, and uh, lightetis. So the answer there is onomatopoeia. So you can see goggling, a kind of sound, goggling. So burst, burst is also a sound. My something burst. So the dominant literary device there is that of onomatopoeia. That's option B. Let's move on to the next question. Alone and thirsty on the desert, Stephen shouted, Water, where are thou? Illustrate A. Apostrophe, B. Epigram, C. Epithet, and D. Simile. The answer there is apostrophe because it's like water is like a human being. Where are you? You know, the other time I said, Sometimes. When you are calling God, God, please help me. I think God is there. I think water is there. You can touch the water. You can see the water. So it's an apostrophe. Let's move on to the next question. Euphemism is used to A, advise the public. B, exaggerate the importance of a touchy topic. C, offend the public. D, speak around an uncomfortable topic. So here, euphemism is used to is the advice the public no exaggerate the uh, importance of a of a, a touchy topic offend the public speak around an uncomfortable topic so d is the answer if you want to something that is not palatable something that is not good you want to make it very good for example you say ah, the king is dead 
Instead of saying the king is there, you can say, ah, the king has gone. You, know, you don't want to announce to the public that the king is dead. What you are saying, the king has gone. If somebody is pregnant, you don't want to say, ah, this girl is pregnant. You say, ah, this girl has been put in a family way. So you don't want to. So you are trying to make it, you know, make it an uncomfortable topic. So this is the answer. Let's move on to the next question. Which of these is an element of a novel? Element of a novel. We have act, chapter, line, and scene. So here, a novel must have chapter. Act is for drama. A line is for, uh, for poem. Scene is also for drama. So B is the answer. Chapter. You have chapter by chapter of a, a novel. Let's move on to the next question. The dominant literary device in the above line is... So the line we're talking about. Can we move on to that line again? Let's see it again. Let's go back to the, okay, let's go back to the other, uh, the last question that the, okay. Okay, is this one now? No more scratching, snarling, spitters, no more sofa, door to shred. You got scratching, snarling, splitter, you can see S, S, S. So it's an example of alliteration. So let's now move to the question. So the dominant is that of alliteration. Let's move on to the next question. A line or part of a line repeated usually at the end of a stanza is an alliteration, a polism, alliteration, a refrain, a verse. In music, if you look at your hymn books, you normally call it refrain. So the answer is refrain. At the end, of each line, you see refrain. I mean, each stanza, you see there refrain, trying to a kind of uh, repeated. You repeat over again. It's common in music and it's also in poetry. So let's move on to the next question. So let's look at this uh, 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 um, prose. This are not seen prose. Once there was a great wrestler whose back had never touched the ground. He wrestled. From village to village, until he had thrown every man in the world. Then he decided that he must go and wrestle in the land of the spirits and became champion there as well. He went and beat every spirit that came forward and became champion. Some had seven heads, others ten, but he beat them all. His companions, who sang his praise, on the field, begging to come away, but he will not. His blow rose, his blow rose, his ear nailed up rather than heed the call to go home. He gave a challenge to the spirits to bring out their best and strongest wrestler. So they sent him, his personal God, a little. Uh, Weary spirit who sees him with one hand and smash him on the uh, stony earth. So let's look at the questions there. You can see the story. Very interesting. The story is an example of A, ballad, B, folklore, C, legend, and D, folktale. So it is an example of folklore because it's like somebody is telling you a story that happened in those days, you know. In Africa, you know, they want probably in the night they gather you together, and begin to tell you story. You know, talk about spirit, talk about the light. You know, they don't. Nobody actually know those sort of thing. But it it is a folklore. So let's move on to the next question. There, the story is told by Dash narrator, a a first person. B, an unreliable. C, a third person. So it is told through a third person narrative text. Go, you talk about he, him. If you look at um, the uh, second, uh, second line or the first paragraph, it says he wrestled. Then he, look at it there. He must go. You can see there the use of he, second person narrative technique, second person 
It is you. I mean, third person, rather. Third person. It is you, third person, narrative technique. Shall we go on? It's a third person. So let's look at the next question. The second sentence in the passage, you lost read. Second sentence. That is, let's look at the second sentence. He wrestled from village to village. The second person in the passage, you lost read. He wrestled from village to village until he had thrown every man in the world. Every man in the whole world. From what? How can somebody go? Me from Nigeria to Ghana, to Ghana, to Africa, to all of Africa, go to Europe, go to Australia, everywhere. So, is it possible? So, it's an example of A, hyperbole, B, irony, C, metaphor, and D, paradox. It is an hyperbole, exaggeration. So, it's common when you are telling a story. So, let's move on to the next question. Okay, the underlying expression reveal the restless dash. So let's look at the underline. His blood roused. His ear and nail up. Can you see the use of that? What is that? Anger? Determination? There. Hate and jealousy. Hatred and jealousy. Number C, their hatred. D, jealousy. So the answer is anger was annoying. He wanted to walk. So it's an anger. So let's look. Let's see the next question. Okay. The passage teaches us to, teaches us to, you know, this is an example of, you know, kind of, you are, he's telling you a story, telling you a lesson. What, which lesson are we going to get from here? A, believe in our personal abilities. B, do things in moderation. C, respect our personal God. D, do things in excess. So from here, what do you think will happen? We can see that they are, he beat everybody. Until you cannot, nobody, you now say, okay, spirit, demons, let me, let's fight. Until he was beaten. So that shows that, and some people told him, let's go. He said, no. So that shows we must do things in moderation. That's what we can learn there. And that's a, a, a B, do things in moderation. Let's go to the next question. There is no arm, armor against faith. Dead lays his hands on kings. Set her crown, must tumble down, and in the doors be equal made with the poor crook, skites, and spade. So, the poem is about a death, b faith, c poverty, d royalty. So, the answer is death. So, when you look at this, you even talk about it, you say there is no armor against faith. No matter how what you do, faith, you cannot work against faith. So whatever will happen, will happen. He said, then, lay his eyes in hand on kings. Even no matter how powerful you are, president, leaders, they are kings. So death can take them. He said, setter, who are the setter? Those who wear crown. They, they carry gold on, uh, and crown. So could be governor, anybody. So the poem is about death. Let's do Let's look at the next question. Okay. So, the next question is on the line. Line, he lost three. Let's look at it. He said, deadly is his hand on kings. Deadly is his hand on king. You can see that it is a kind of personification. I see dead has hand. It's a human being. Can lay hand. So, A, metaphor. C, paradox. D, personification. And, uh, I mean, C, personification. D, Lit, uh, light it is. So the answer there is personification. That is option C. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. Setter and crown illustrate. A. Hyperbole. B. Irony. C. Metonymy. And D. Simile. The answer there is metonymy. What is metonymy? You are using something to represent. If I say the crown has come. The crown is not ordinary crown, which means a king or the governor or a leader or the president. Setter, you know, go the setter, we are in something. So that's only, I don't know whether you have gone to a particular place before, maybe a marriage ceremony, and you discover the king was not there, but they don't carry the staff of office to stay there. That is a symbol of a king, a leader. When you see it there, that is what we are saying here. It is metonymy, you see, representing somebody. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. 
he, this one say the poem let's look at this poem again so there is no armor against faith then lay his eyes in hand on king set and crown must tumble down and it does be equal me with the poor crook sky and spade the poem is ironic metaphoric sarc uh, sarcastic and uh, satirical no it is metaphor it has meaning underlying meaning hidden meaning just not ordinary but it's not surface but we can see meaning there so that is an example of a metaphor so it's metaphorical in nature let's move on to the next question okay the next question is the rhyme scheme of the poem is uh, let you look at it uh, it's already look at faith you put here there so look at the last end rhyme there faith kings you can see a b crown c down c equal mid you can see there d and uh, spade again and made d you can see a b c c d d so the answer there a b c c d d yeah, the, the answer is d d is the answer a b c c d d so let's move on to the next question okay let's look at this speaker somebody is representing this speaker x yeah be like and this is from um, uh, uh, a miss sign a miss summer night dream by shakespeare miss summer night my dream by shakespeare this is a syllabus for jam syllabus for white and it's also a recommended text for a, a neko examination so let's look at the question there so let's look at the speaker speaker x speaker x stands for somebody and let's look at the be like for one of rain which i could wear beaten then from the tempest of my eyes let's speak a b a me for all that i could ever read whoever I hear by tell her history the course of thriller never did run smooth but either it was different in blood so the setting here i want to look at the atmosphere where is the setting where is this quotation made because setting is talking about place and time but here we are looking at the place where is this place so a another part of the wood b a wood near antes c queenie south d tissus palace this is uh, the king's palace so the answer is d tissus palace so let's go to the next question okay want to look at who is x x there and who is a uh, uh, so let's look at x here's there is hamia hamia that's okay a helena b hamia c Hippolyta and D Titania. So there is Hamia. Hamia is the speak is the is a ex speaker ex. So the next question, speaker Y, the two of them together, speaker Y Dementors, Lysander, C Oberon, and D Tissus. So it's um, uh, the woman that is and her husband to be. And that is a demand uh, list lisander that is number b is the answer the two of them were the one planning maybe probably to elope to elope at that time they wanted to run away to the wood so uh, the answer is b lisander let's move on to the next question okay speaker x expresses a joy b loneliness c regret and d sorrow so he's not lonely and he's not in a joyful mood at the same time, but it's a, a kind of in a sorrowful mood because they were not allowed to marry originally and they were trying to elope so that they can go and marry. Because what the father wanted him to do, I mean, wanted her to do was to marry another person. But in this case, they wanted to elope with her right man so that they can go away and marry elsewhere. Let's move on to the next question. So look at speaker x here the same text a miss summer night dream by shakespeare okay the same thing so dash the tempest of my eyes he lost rain he ironic b paradox c metonymy d personification t 
Tempest of my eyes. Tempest of my eye. Tempest and eyes. So what do you think is happening there? Tempest of my eyes. And that is an example of a metonymy. Metonymy. Tempest of my eyes. Can we go on to the next question? Okay. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, he stand as an ed edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience because it is a customary cross. As due to love as thoughts and dreams and sigh, witches and tears, poor fancies followers. So, if then true lovers have been ever crawled, he stands as an idiot in destiny, then let us teach our trial patience because it is a, a customary cross. As due to love as thoughts and dream and sigh, which is and tears, poor fancies followers. So the speaker here is A, Dimentros, B, Hamia, C, Lysander, D, Helena. Here is, um, is also Hamia. Hamia is the one speaking because he's passing through a particular problem, a particular trial at the same time, and he's talking, discussing with our friend there. So let's have the next question. Hamia, that's B. So look at this one. The speaker is addressing who? Dimentros, Oberon, Lysander, Tissio. He's also addressing uh, 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 Dimentros. Dimentros. That is A, Dimentros. Can we move on to the next question? Okay. The speaker and the addressee are planning to... You can see what I, I just hinted on that the other time. What are they trying to do? Hello? To see Titius? Marry? Talk to Eagles? No. So they wanted to hello. Wanted to run away to the woods to get married. Here is the answer. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. True lovers in the first line refers to the Indian true lover have been ever crossed. Refer to Elena and Lysander, Lysander and Hamia, Helen, Helena and Dimentros. It's a uh, Titania and Bottom. The answer is Lysander and Hamia. That's our answer there. They are the true lovers. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. A customary cross. A customary cross. A is abstinence. B, beauty. C, patience. D, sacrifice. Customary. It's, all, it's normal to say you must carry your cross. And when you carry your cross, what do you do? You endure. You are, you, even though you, it's a suffering, but you endure it. So it's a metaphor there. So the answer there is patient. Be patient. Very soon, things will be well. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. Don't forget to uh, like by subscribing to the YouTube channel. And let's continue. <laughs> let's go to the next question, which is question 121. The same from the text, which is from Shakespeare. A midsummer night dream. So, the shallowest thick skin of that barren sword, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his sin and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage thing, and as whole, I fixed on his head. Anon is Tisby, must be answered. And forth my mimic comes. When they him spy, the speaker is A. Dimentros, B. Helena, C. Pork, and D. Hamia. The answer is Pork. Is one that uh, trying to use magic to put horn on somebody's head using that. So it is Pork. What's the next question? Okay, the speaker is addressing A. Button, B. Oberon, C. Lysander. And D, Tissio, is also addressing bottom. Bottom is the answer there. That's A. Let's go to question, the next question. The scene is A, another part of the wood. B, the wood. C, a room in Queen's house. D, the palace. So it is another part of the wood. We are in the wood at that time. So let's go to the next question. 
the shallowest thick skin refers to the shallowest thick skin. But um, B cobweb, C false fairy, D false fairy. It is number B cobweb. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, what just happened is that A the speaker's mistress has fallen in love. B the speaker has been blinded. C the speaker's mistress has eloped with his lover. D the speaker's has met his master. The answer is the speaker's has been blinded. Magic has been played upon him and he went blind. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. To let her, my lord, I was betrothed. Hey, I saw Hamia. But like in sickness, did I load his food? Did I load this food? But as in health, come to my natural taste. Now, I do wish it. Love it. Long for it. And I will forever be true to it. The speaker is Demetrius. B. Igas, C. Lysander, and D. Tissius. So we can see the man here talking. He said, To let her, my lord. This is a man who desired to marry. He's talking about his wife. I saw Hamia. I was betrothed. Hey, I saw Hamia. So, and that is talking about Lysander. And that is C. Talking about how, I mean, his own wife to be. And that is Lys, I mean, a, a Hamia. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, the speaker is addressing Eagles and Oberon. B, Tissus and uh, Philostray. C, Oberon and Titania. And D, Tissus and Eagles. So he's addressing Eagles and Oberon. He's addressing Eagles and Oberon. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, the C is A, the palace. C, the queen's house. D, the wood, and D, it goes out. It is in the palace. That is A. That is the king's palace. Shall we move on to the next question? Okay. Look at the next question. The underlying part illustrate. Look at it. But like in sickness, did I load this foot? But as in head, come to my natural taste. So, but like in sickness, did I load this food? But as in head, come to my natural taste. So the underlying part illustrate A, conceit, B, euphemism, C, oxymoron, D, simile. It looked like simile, but it's not a simile. It's but like in sickness, simile. This is simile. Because like in sickness, you are comparing what is happening to sickness. Anytime you say like or ask. So comparing one thing to the other is talking about simile. So simile, that's a kind of indirect reference. So the answer is D. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. Who speaks immediately after the speech is made? When you look at the atmosphere, the person that was there is... Um, Oberon, Oberon. So A, Eagles, C, Hippolyta, C, Oberon, and D, Tiso. So it is Oberon. Thank you very much. So far, so good. You have been part of this uh, educational program. Want to continue to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as you do that, I hope that you will not remain the same. Whether you are taking jam or you are writing Waik or Neko, your life cannot remain the same. Thank you very much.